Hi everyone and welcome back to Macaroon. For this video, I found some of the weirdest craft supplies that I've ever come across in 10 years of doing YouTube. I know you might be thinking, how can a product be viral but still unknown? So these are either new versions of existing craft materials, or they're popular for completely different reasons. For instance, this Kefi foam cleanser is super viral in the beauty community, but I also discovered that they sell a special liquid that turns the foam into slime. This is one of the most satisfying things I've ever played with, so keep on watching to see the details. The first craft material is a rare type of nanotape. By now we all know about nanotape, which is almost always transparent. I've occasionally seen colorful tape being sold, but I've never seen ones which have glitter inside. I found this set on Amazon Japan and had to try it out. The biggest question in my head is whether this is actually worth getting. As you probably know, the typical method for using nanotape is to fill it with glitter and the result usually looks great. The glitter particles inside this tape are not very dense, so I can't imagine these being more visible once the tape has been inflated. So I really want to know whether we can create anything using this type of nanotape that can't be done by filling regular tape up with loose glitter. To start with, I'm going to make a normal air-filled bubble. This tape is fairly thin, so you don't have to heat it using a hairdryer or hot water. The only thing to watch out for is that you need to leave an air pocket between the tip of the straw and the tape. This step is actually trickier if you're not using loose glitter because it's easy to accidentally press the tape closed. I find it helps if you push along the edge of the tape while closing it up, almost like you're making gyoza or ravioli. You also have to be extra careful when taking the plastic film off because this is where the tape tends to stick together. As you can see, the bubble turned out fine, but the glitter really isn't that noticeable. It's actually been stretched out unevenly, so there's more glitter close to the seam and not a lot in the round part of the nano bubble. I'm trying this again with a different color and the result is similar. This one deflated a bit, but I was able to create a rounder shape. I'm going to paint a face on it, just like the first tutorial I made. The pink glitter edge looks a bit like hair, which I think is kind of cute, but to be honest, this doesn't really blow me away. I think you can get a much better effect just by filling normal nanotape with your own choice of glitter. However, the next thing I want to try is a water bubble. I think you can get some pretty cool effects by contrasting the glitter with the color of liquid inside, but for the purpose of a fair test, I'm going to stick with clear water. Once again, you don't have to heat this up, so just squeeze the liquid inside and press the opening shut. This one is actually very interesting, because as you can see, all the glitter is concentrated at the base, almost like mini jellyfish tentacles. At first I was a bit disappointed because I was hoping for more sparkle across the surface. However, when I started playing with this, I realized that the water creates a magnifying effect. So at certain angles, the bubble looks perfectly transparent, whereas at another angle, you can see a magnified version of the glitter from the base. I love how the particles look kind of distorted, almost like they're inside a crystal ball. I'm really pleased to discover this optical illusion of having a transparent or glittery nanobubble depending on the angle you look at it. This is something that cannot be achieved by filling normal tape with glittery liquid, which is what I did in this video. Loose glitter inside a bubble will always be visible, whereas this version is only possible due to the particles being embedded into the nanotape. So this rare type of tape can actually be used to create a crystal ball effect. And as a final note, remember that nanotape sticks extremely easily to itself. So if you decide to place two bubbles together, you probably won't be able to separate them without one breaking. Next up we have graphite putty. I found out about this from Ray Dizzle Short, which went pretty viral. Putty eraser is obviously well known, and I've tried making it from a kit and from eraser shavings before. 
Putty graphite is new to me and I'm really curious whether you can sculpt or craft with it. I believe there's only one brand that sells this, which is Artgraph. It's an incredibly soft lump of graphite, which is the same thing as what's inside a pencil. This putty is a bit crumblier than I expected, but you can use it exactly the same way as charcoal. It goes on really smoothly and can be mixed with water to create ink-like effects. The main downside is that it stains your fingers incredibly quickly. As you can see, this is a pretty messy material to play with. I'm going to switch to rubber gloves because I don't want to wash my hands every 20 seconds. I'm trying to create some shapes with the putty, but it's too crumbly to work with. This reminds me a bit of extremely dried up pottery clay. You can roll it into a ball, but you can't create small shapes like ears. So my next idea is to mix it with a bit of air dry clay, which might give the graphite some elasticity. This package of hearty clay is very old and almost dried up, but there's just enough soft clay left for me to try it. I'm simply mixing a small blob into the graphite and kneading it with some water. This is actually working and I ended up with a piece of pencil clay. It's obviously not as soft as paper clay, but still a lot easier to sculpt compared to pure graphite putty. I'm pressing out two ears and turning this into a koala. I notice that once the graphite is mixed into clay, it no longer stains your hands. However, this also means that you can't draw with it as easily. I'm rubbing it onto paper, but it barely leaves any marks. I'm a bit disappointed as I was hoping to create custom shaped pencils with this. But then I tried dipping it into water and I was really excited to discover that this lets you draw with it again. It's not versatile enough for serious artistic work, but it's still pretty fun as a novelty DIY. You can basically make your own pencils in any shape or size. So a final thing I discovered about graphite putty is that you can't erase it. This is pretty bizarre because it's the most obvious thing you'd imagine when seeing this product in use. At first I thought it was because of the clay I added, but then I realized that the earliest drawings I made were also not erasable. I'm guessing that the moisture content they added to make the graphite soft also makes it stick permanently to paper. Last but not least, we have Kefi Bubble Slime. As mentioned in the very beginning, it's actually their foam cleansers that went viral. However, I find their slime solution equally fascinating because it's not like anything I've seen before. Right after opening, it looks a lot like transparent liquid soap. However, after touching it, you realize it's quite a bit thicker and stickier. You can pull it into long strings like this. When I was pouring this into another container, I also noticed how strange the texture is. It doesn't flow smoothly like soap, but it has a gloopy consistency. The closest I can describe it is that this feels like a clear slime, which has only been 10% activated. I suspect this contains a PVA solution along with a tiny amount of sodium borate to create the slimy texture. The next problem is that I don't actually have the original Kefi bubble cleanser. Because this comes in a pressurized container, it's almost impossible to find a place that sells it with overseas shipping. However, after watching many videos featuring this cleanser, I'm pretty sure that I have a dupe. This is a bath foam that I often buy for my daughter and it looks virtually identical to the Kefi cleanser. As you can see, the foam is surprisingly solid and you can play or mold it with your hands. It's different to shaving cream or other body foams that tend to dissolve when you touch it. I'm going to be using this brand as a substitute for the Kefi cleanser because I'm sure that both of these are extremely similar. First, place the foam into a bowl and then add some bubble slime. Then you're going to mix both of these together. This is marketed as a sensory product for children, so I don't think it's supposed to give you a perfect non-sticky slime. It's meant to be used in the bathtub or somewhere suitable for messy play. You're also supposed to go in with your hands and not use any tools for mixing. I have to say this experience was immensely satisfying. As you can see, the clear liquid mixes with the foam to create an insanely fluffy and slippery slime. 
It's not fully activated by any means, but the feeling of squishing and stretching this is so relaxing. It's also very easy to wash away. My theory is that Kathy Bubble Slime is a super light water slime. I'm pretty sure this will also work with shaving foam or any kind of foamy base. You can use it to create a super lightweight mixture to play with. I don't really want to call this a slime because it's not fully activated and it sticks to skin, but the sensory experience is pretty incredible. It also takes the pressure out of making slime because you don't have to measure anything or expect a perfect result. This will work every time, no matter how you mix it. I hope you enjoyed this review and you might like some of my other videos featuring rare or unusual craft supplies. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!